Hi, welcome to my channel. I thought I'd do another video on Irish slang and phrases. You guys gave me some great suggestions after the last video, so thank you for that, and I've included some of those. If you like this kind of thing, please give this video a like, subscribe for more, and let's get started. First up is arseways. If someone says this is going arseways, they're basically saying this is going wrong. Like if you're trying to find somewhere and you're getting lost, you could say, oh, this GPS is sending me arseways. Or if you're planning an outdoor barbecue and it starts to rain, you could say, oh, it's all going arseways. Arse in Ireland is your backside. So you're saying it's all going back sideways or backwards, arseways. <laughs> Next up is pure and it means really, very, or completely. You could say, oh, this dinner is going pure arseways, or oh, that movie was pure boring. The housing situation in Ireland right now is pure mental. It like emphasizes not just whatever, but pure whatever. Next up is the phrase, you know yourself. This is a way of avoiding a lengthy explanation. When you say this, you're explaining without actually explaining. If someone asks you a question, you can say, sure, you know yourself and nothing more needs to be said. It's basically, it's what you'd imagine and um, figure it out. Uh, I don't really want to go into details. And um, how are you? Ah, uh, you know yourself. And um, what'd you get up to at the weekend? Ah, uh, just the usual, you know yourself. It can also be a way of making a point of something obvious, like, oh, they lost the match, you know yourself, if they always lose, or, oh, I got stuck in Friday traffic, you know yourself, if they know what Friday traffic is like. Next up is bad dose, and it usually means really sick, like, oh, I heard you had COVID, yeah, it was a bad dose, I was in bits. Or you could say, oh, I hear there's a really bad dose of the flu going around this year. Awful dose can be used for the same thing, but it can also refer to a person. So if you say, ah, he's an awful dose, you're saying he's someone that you don't really want to hang around because he's annoying. You don't want to be called a dose. <laughs> it's not a good thing. Next up is gives a shot of that. And it basically means, can I have a go of that? Or can I have some of that? Like if you're at dinner and someone says, gives a shot of that ketchup, they're asking you to pass the ketchup. Or if you're playing a game and someone says, gives a shot of that, they're asking you for a turn. Gives a shot of that. Next is a chancer. A chancer is a person who chances their arm to get something. Like, uh, oh, that girl faked a doctor's note so she could go on holiday, she's some chancer. They're, it's not usually malicious and it won't usually hurt anyone, but they are pushing their luck to get something that could backfire on them. And um, that chancer pretending he was a bouncer to sneak into the festival. When I was a kid, my brother's tennis coach called him a chancer because he'd swap the racket into whatever hand to use so we never had to do a backhand. And um, you know, he was chancing his luck with this trick. But I misunderstood and I thought chancer meant someone who could use their right hand and left hand equally as well, like ambidextrous. So I was about 18 before I realized chancer did not mean ambidextrous. And I think back to all the conversations I had where I used the word completely wrong and I get the fear. And that's the next one, the fear. It basically means cringing as you try to remember something and it's most commonly used the morning after a night out. Like, you know when you've drank too much and you have the fear of, oh, what did I say? What did I do? And um, like, oh, I have an awful dose of the fear. I think I flashed my boss or, oh, I think I overshared. The fear has me never drinking again. And the fear doesn't just stop at your antics from the night before. The fear has you questioning all of your life's choices. Like, I don't love my job. My friends don't like me. I'm spending too much money. Like all of these crazy thoughts. And um, usually the fear doesn't last longer than a hangover, but yeah, we don't like the fear. <laughs> Next up is mineral. This one I think is more the older generation. If you're visiting someone's mommy or granny and they say, will you have a mineral? They're asking you, will you have a fizzy drink? And a fizzy drink is like a soda, like a Coke, a 7-Up or a Fanta. If you've had enough of the fear, you'll say, I'm sticking to minerals from now on. Next up is the big smoke, and this is Dublin. I think the big smoke refers to any big city in any country, but in Ireland, we pronounce it the big smoke. I think because people from the country would call Dublin that, and they might pronounce it with the SH like smoke. So now it's commonly known as the big smoke. My husband is from Dublin, 
I'm from Wicklow and when we moved down to Wicklow he immediately started referring to Dublin as the big smoke. People when you're living in Dublin you don't really refer to it as the big smoke but uh, people in the country if they're going up there they'd say oh heading to the big smoke for a gig at the weekend or um, oh, I'm getting the bus in in the morning from the big smoke. Next up is banjaxed and this can mean a few different things. It can mean tired or broken or in a bad state. If someone says there's a heat wave has me banjaxed I can't get up in the morning they're saying they're tired. If someone says oh I crashed my bike and it's banjaxed they're saying their bike is broken or if someone says I banjaxed my arm in the gym last night they're saying their arm is in a bad state. My husband's arm is banjaxed at the moment, so I'm hearing this one a lot. <laughs> Next is away with the fairies, and this means out of touch with reality. Like, am I away with the fairies to be thinking we'll get a table at this restaurant tonight? Or like someone living in a dreamland, like, um, oh, she's really nice. She's a bit away with the fairies, but harmless. Teachers would use this a lot. Like if they catch a student kind of staring into distance and not paying attention, they'd say, are you away with the fairies? Next one is dig out and it basically means help. Like, can you give me a dig out? Can you help me out of this hole? You might say, can you give me a dig out and give me a lift here? Or can anyone give me a dig out and lend me this thing? I gave her a dig out and I lent her that thing. <laughs> yeah, basically help. The next one is a deadly buzz. This means great time. It was deadly buzz at the party last night or oh, we go here, it's supposed to be deadly buzz. Deadly means great and buzz means vibe. So yeah, like great vibe. It can also just mean great, like in response to someone. So if someone says, um, oh, I passed my driving test, you can say, ah, deadly buzz. Or, oh, she gave me a dig out with the last concert ticket. Ah, deadly buzz. There's also bad buzz, which is obviously the opposite of great buzz. Like, oh, they lost the match. So there was a serious bad buzz. Um, a person can also be a bad buzz, like, oh, he's always moaning about something, a pure bad buzz. A person like that can wreck the buzz, which means ruin the vibe or the mood, like, oh, it was a great session, but the guards came in and shut us down, so they wrecked the buzz. And someone can also be buzzing, like when you're really excited about something, like, um, oh, it was pure buzzing all night, it was such a great party, or, um, oh, I'm buzzing for this week's episode of whatever TV show. It can also be, we do a lot with buzz, but it can also be when you're really into something, like doing something a lot in the moment. Like if you're eating burritos every night, you'd say, oh, I'm on a burrito buzz. Or if you've gotten really into an exercise, like boxing, you'd say, oh, I'm on a boxing buzz. It's basically like doing something a lot more than usual in that moment on a buzz. Next up is fierce, and it's very or extremely, usually with weather, like, oh, it's fierce windy out today, or fierce mild out. There's fierce pollen in the air when someone is suffering from hay fever. This is me at the moment, fierce hay fever. And it can be used um, as other things apart from just weather, like, uh, oh, that exam was fierce tough. Next is brutal, and it means terrible. I am brutal for making a cup of tea. Um, oh, the ending of that movie was brutal. Often used a lot with weather as well, like, um, oh, the weather is brutal, the weather is terrible. Next up is the head on me, and this can mean one of three things. It can either be for a hangover, like, oh, the head on me, I was out last night, or it can be if you do something a bit thick, like a bit stupid, like, ah, oh, I'm after putting salt in my coffee, the head on me. Or it can be if, you, if you're looking a state, like you're looking bad, like, um, oh my God, I got drenched in the rain, my hair, the head on me. Or if you see a bad photo of yourself, you can just say, the head on me. You can also use it for other people, the head on him, the head on her. And I always use it, and I always heard other people use it as a negative thing, like the head on me isn't right. I always thought it was like in a bad thing. But when I was researching this video, I found other people using it as like, a positive thing like the head on me I look so happy or um, the head on me I loved my hair so I don't know if that's just where I'm from we use it as a negative thing or if I'm just completely mistaken the head on me the next one is having notions if someone says someone else has notions they're basically saying they think very highly of themselves or they're acting very extravagant above their station. Like if someone refuses to drink tap water and only ever requests bottled water, someone might say they have notions. 
or anyone that does their weekly grocery shop in Marks and Spencers would be said to have notions. And um, anyone that gets Tato occasions instead of regular Tato. Irish people, we love a bit of begrudgery. And if someone gets a designer outfit or a crystal chandelier, instead of complimenting them, we'll say they have notions. Restaurants, if they charge too much, they have notions. Um, someone might take it as a compliment, like, oh, I'm doing well for myself, but it's never meant as a compliment. <laughs> Next up is in the nip, and it means naked. As kids, we'd all run around in our gardens in the nip on a hot summer day. Those women were in the nip. Um, I tried to research this because I was trying to figure out where it originated, like what's the meaning behind in the nip, like is nip for nipple, but I couldn't find anything about it. But it's a popular phrase in Ireland, we probably use in the nip more than the word naked. Um, in the last few years, sea swimming has become really popular in Ireland. I have a group of friends that swim in the sea every single morning. And one fundraising event has become really big and it's called Dip in the Nip. And it's basically um, a group of people to raise money for a charity. They all get naked and run into the sea. Dip in the Nip. Next up is didn't, and it's a way of phrasing a sentence starting with the word didn't. Like instead of saying, I went to the shop and forgot my list, you'd say, didn't I go to the shop and forget my list? It's not a question, it's a statement, and it's usually a statement where something has gone wrong. Like you wouldn't say, didn't I make myself a cup of tea without something else happening? Like it would have to be, didn't I make myself a cup of tea before realizing we have no milk? I associate this one with Irish mammies more than anyone else. Like, I don't know anyone my age that uses it like that, but I don't know any Irish mommy that doesn't <laughs> use it like that. Um, didn't she go into the city and get lost? Didn't they all go swimming in the sea in the nip? And that's it, that is my list of Irish slang and phrases. I still have so many more that I couldn't fit into this video, so please hit that notification bell if you don't wanna miss part four. And if you have any suggestions or if I missed any, please let me know in the comments so I can include them in a future video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more, please subscribe and thanks for watching. Bye.